Hi, everyone. Welcome to eLearn Chat, where talk is knowledge. And I'm joined by our talkie. She loves to talk. <laughs> Don Mahoney. Hey, Don. Happy New Year. I like to talk. Sure, you <laughs> love to talk. Of course I do. That's why you have me here. <laughs> How you doing, Don? I'm well, and you? Good. I'm very cold, and I'll just apologize up front for the video quality from my end. I guess it's not going to be great today. But you're lit. But I'm lit. Some people will make lots of jokes about that. <laughs> so anyway, Don, did you have a good holiday? I did. Santa Claus was very good to me. He gave me new windows in my house. Oh, nice. And uh, had a little time with family, and here I am. Well, that sounds ready great. Ready to rock and roll. How about you, Grandpa? Uh, I'm about the same. Uh, we worked most of the weekend, but it was it was okay. I'm glad to be back. And I at this point, I don't see, foresee any reason I won't be here on Wednesdays most of the time. Okay. No more travel. <laughs> no more travel? No more travel. C'est fini? Yeah, well, unless something crops up, I guess. Okay, well, fingers crossed. Yeah, we'll see how this year goes. I say let's bring Carl in. He's got lots to talk with us about. Yeah, we've got with us today Carl Cab. Do you want to introduce him? Well, you just did, but I'll introduce him too. Um, Carl Kapp is with us, and I, I'm assuming we'll talk gamification. In the pre-show, we were talking about his fabulous students and the work he's doing, so maybe we'll learn a little bit more about that. Welcome, Carl. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, glad to be here, Don. Glad to be here, Rick. I know it's early for you, Rick, so thanks for uh, getting up early and accommodating the East Coast time. Oh, no problem, <laughs> and Happy New Year to you, too. Happy New Year. So you're in, you're in Pennsylvania. We're in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. It's about 16 degrees right now, so very Oof. windery and blustery. Um, we're going to be 75 today, so I, it's, just, <laughs> it's just a Don't sad thing. Don't tell us thing. that. <laughs> it's a sad but, but we have other issues, so it's okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't go down the politics route. I forgot no, I didn't to give say you the one you in did. advance, Carl. <laughs> oh, I didn't uh -oh. say politics. I was thinking drought and other things, but... Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. You never want to go down the politics road with Rick. No, no. He lives in California. It's a crazy town. I, it yes. is crazy. So um, tell us about how you got um, your students involved in participating in projects and bringing them to DevLearn. I love that idea. So, yeah. So um, one of the tenets of our program, so a uh, little background. I'm a professor of instructional technology in a graduate program at Bloomsburg University, and one of the things that we pride ourselves on our particular program is lots of hands-on experience. So our students work with Articulate, they work with uh, Lectura, they work with um, Captivate, Zebra Zap. So they work with all of the <laughs> programs to get experience developing and not just designing the instruction. And so um, I had been going, you know, obviously to conferences for a while, and I said, oh, it's such a great experience. I'd really like to take our students to a conference. And so uh, I took a couple of students to help me with the workshop that Sharon Bowler and I were doing uh, called Play to Learn. And we're doing it also at uh, Learning Solutions. So if anybody out there is going to Learning Solutions, uh, you may want to join us for that great workshop. And um, uh, I brought students along to help and said, wow, this would be great. And so uh, it was a little expensive, but we talked to the Learning Guild and talked to Dave, and we worked out. We're uh, Bloomsburg University is a corporate partner of the eLearning Guild, and got a great discount for the students, and Yay. they got to go and a great program for them. Great. What's, what's also interesting that you guys are doing um, real hands-on because that's not that common in a lot of instructional technology or design programs. I've, I've been railing about that for years that if you don't have any hands-on and you haven't done anything, by the time you graduate, you don't know anything. Right. Um, so this is this is actually refreshing. Oh, good. No, so let, let me uh, give a quick. So we do two, well, you do three to four distinct things uh, uh, in terms of getting students involved in projects. So one is called Advanced Instructional Design. And that course, the students have to, I don't teach that course, but the students have to get a real client and they have to do a project mm -hmm. from instructional analysis to final delivery and summative evaluation all within 15 weeks. Mm -hmm. wow. So they get to work with a real client and they get real client problems. And so it's not like, you know, in a book, you, so on an interview when someone says, well, what would you do if a client you know, didn't back to you right away? They can say, well, the book says to do this. They can say, <laughs> look, we had a client and they did not get us back to us right away. And here's what we did. And then the second um, 
program at Capstone, we have something called Managing Multimedia Projects, which the students get an actual or, or get a mock request for proposal. They have to write a proposal, a 20-minute sales presentation, and then present that to our corporate advisory council. So it's a great experience for them to actually present in front of people really in the field. Then we have GA projects. We have an institute that goes along with our graduate program. And in the institute, we work on projects for companies like Black & Decker and L'Oreal and B. Braun and Kellogg's and that kind of stuff. And then we bring employers to campus uh, twice a year to interview our students and to give us input, uh, input on our program. You know, are we covering what's happening in the field? Are we using the same software that you require for work with your clients or in your company? So we uh, spend a lot of time and effort really to stay um, on the edge of what's happening in the field so that our students uh, can literally hit the ground running when they graduate from our program. So the question in the chat pod is, are they working with code as well or, um, and not, I, I wouldn't guess necessarily the instructional design, the advanced capstone, but the people that are using the tools in your program track. Um, code, I'm assuming, uh, well, they work with all the software. Um, when Flash was, they were using ActionScript when Flash was there. Um, we don't, we do Flash a little bit just for maintenance and things like that. Um, they get under the hood as much as possible. We've had some students do some really brilliant work with um, Storyline um, and kind of get in there. So they're not programmers per se. You know, they're not programming databases or they're not programming, you know, applications. But they're they're authors or de um, uh, developers who are using the tools to create effective instruction. We do Photoshop. We do. Um, uh, uh, audio, fo um, my, my goodness, I'm having a total blank. blank. Um, <laughs> audacity, that's it. Audacity. Oh, okay. For, um, yeah, audio. Audio. We, we use stuff like uh, Video Scribe for whiteboard videos. Um, <laughs> we try to mobile learning. Our students are developed. We have a class called uh, uh, Authoring for uh, Mobile Devices. And uh, we create, using HTML5, we create mobile apps um, for the devices and all kinds of things. So so our, we view our, and we're a niche in that um, we don't have a PhD program. We're only a master's program. But we work really hard to make sure that the students are relevant and are, are making a difference. All of the faculty here were really interested in hands-on learning, um, not, you know, heavy research. That's why we're not at a Research One university. We're at Bloomsburg that allows us the freedom to um, do project work and to really help the students be productive. And it shows in our um, our placement rate is is almost a hundred percent. I mean, it's amazing. Wow, that's great. Um, that matters. Really the, yeah, yes. and that's a, that's a crucial one because a lot of kids graduate and they can't get a job because they've either had no experience. I know a couple of of colleges. They were they're private colleges out here. That, that to me, they're kind of puppy mills. They they don't really put out kids with any background. First of all, most of the kids just the parents pay all the money. They they don't have to work for it. They don't appreciate it, and a lot of them don't learn. And it's and we I won't name the schools, but there's several in our area where it just you just go really, um, right? And for that, you wasted a hundred and two hundred thousand really, and they can't yeah. get jobs. Right? They're not qualified. Yeah, well, the other thing about uh, Bloomsburg is that. Um, it's a state school, so it's relatively inexpensive for mm -hmm. in-state, and um, uh, the 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 focus, uh, you know, is always on hands-on learning. That's so great. every class is about fifty percent theory and fifty percent hands-on. Because I've I've Rick, I've had the experience where you know companies will tell us, well, we don't hire instructional design graduates because they're so didactic, mm. they're not flexible. Right. And they follow this theory that's not applicable in the real world. So we try to follow a theory that is applicable in the real world. Yep. So you have to fight that that initial thing with employers. But you know what? I found that once you get an employer on board, you become a feeding mill for, for the employers. In other words, they're looking for your graduates. Yeah, we have one employer, uh, an online university that has 13 of our graduates. That's great. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> 
They actually put a moratorium on hiring our graduates for a while. They're like, we have too many Bloomsburg graduates. Oh, that's great. And uh, speaking of Mel, Melway is uh, logged into the chat pod. She says hello right. and says it's the best program ever. So yeah, she um, she's one of our star alums. So hey, oh, great. Uh, How you doing? Good the uh, I uh, I worked with a student that was a Vanderbilt student in my former company, and he did a program similar to what you were talking about with your capstone, and he was hired and has moved on and done really great things. He's had probably three promotions in the last two years. So practical experience matters. It does. It really makes a difference. It, uh, it because then they can say they have experience when they're interviewing and putting on their resume, and so forth. So, do you want to switch gears and talk about you know the topic on everybody's mind, knowing that Carl was going to be on the show, gamification? Sure. Yeah, uh, one of my favorite topics. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the word. I think I'm pretty sure everybody in my Twitter stream knows I hate the word. So, um, but I like the concept. So, tell us more. Talk about what you want to talk about. All right. Sure. So, you're not alone in, in hating the word. I was doing some work in uh, Mexico, actually, and meeting with the chairman of this huge conglomerate. We walk in. I mean, beautiful mahogany conference room, and you know, you have to. There's armed guards outside and all this kind of stuff. And the first thing he said to me, even before he said, you know, hello or hola, was, I hate the word gamification. <laughs> so you're, you're not alone in uh, not liking the word gamification. Um, but the thing I like about the word gamification is, is it's an encompassing, you know, as soon as you hear the word, you get the concept, which is using elements of games to enhance interactivity. And uh, not the whole game itself. And so what I really like about the concept is it now allows us to look at things that we probably should have been do doing in e-learning all along. And good designers have been doing, but it now kind of gives us the cover to do that. So I divide gamification into two elements or two, two types, if you will. One, I call it content gamification. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I do call it content, but I want to start with the <laughs> I want to start with the other one. Um, the one I call structural gamification, which basically says we're going to add a structure of points and badges through around the content, but we're not going to change the content at all. So that's where you know if you watch this video and answer these questions, you'll get 10 points. If you um, log in and do this exercise, you'll get 20 points. If you contribute to a chat, you'll get five points and you can be on the leaderboard. We did that a lot at, at DevLearn, right? We mm -hmm. had, uh, if you post a picture, you get some points and you could get some swag for that. <laughs> and mm -hmm. my students love the swag. It was so funny how, how they went after that. I didn't um, even know what the swag was. So, hmm. Oh, yeah. There were like um, sweatshirts and T-shirts and, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Um, and I finally, I wasn't going to do it. I'm like, I'm not doing this. I'm not. And finally, I broke down. I'm like, I got to get a shirt. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so the part of, I do like about all of this um, from a reinforcement and layering on learning approach that I've written about and feel passionate about is that when there is a game element, um, sometimes you get kicked out because you lost all your lives or whatever. You have to start over. Right, and um, you get to reinforce the learning that way. I like that part of it. I like that um, that you get to add on to what you've previously learned and get it meted out to you a little at a time. What I, I'm concerned about is our um, in our world these days is everybody needs a badge to uh, to complete something. I'm a little concerned about that in the workplace in a few years, but uh, hopefully. Hopefully, people will be able to make the leaps. Right. So, so I, I look at badges as mini certifications. So if the badge is meaningful and has both intrinsic value and value for what you're doing at work, it's a good thing to have. If you have a badge for showing up five days straight in a row, uh, not a good badge. Right. Uh, so, and the equivalent online, you know, you answer five questions, you get the five question badge. That's meaningless. Right. Um, and that, that's mostly structural gamification, adding a structure around content. The, the, the gamification that I really am passionate about is what I call content gamification, which is where you change the content itself to be more game-like. So as you said, you, you add a challenge, right? Um, 
you might have to start over if you're not paying attention. And I can tell you that when you have something, some skin in the game, like I have to start over or I get more questions if I get this wrong or I'm not going to be successful, then you're going to pay more attention. You're going to be more focused. You're going to feel like what you're doing matters. So by adding um, some degree of risk, even though it's a small degree of risk, you actually help focus the attention of the learner. So much learning now that we do these days is is what I call like it's awareness learning and it's risk free. So you take this course and if you do well, who cares? And if you don't do well, who cares? Um, so nobody cares. Um, so if we want to have learning that has meaning, first we have to tie it to some meaningful performance outcome, and then we can add other elements to it to make it more engaging and people are engaged when they have something at stake so there's some kind of emotion involved and so that's where i think gamification can can really help i think too that as in uh design and developer um process flow as i talk with people in my network and as i think through this um in in some fashion it's interesting to look at how to apply the game concepts in a way that they don't get to also bypass in quotes required learning aspects that they got that they have to have in order to get the whole picture. Right, right. So, I mean, part of the uh, part of the problem I think is that um, you know if you think about learning with a game, it's doing something, right? And I think we've gotten away from. A, a lot of learning by doing, and I think um, if we if we think of learn if we think of the gamification as an engagement mechanism, uh, I think um, that's a really good way to think about it, and not just think about fun. I saw that comment. Ask Carl about fun and gamification. Yes, uh, I think to me, fun is is not like giggling and laughing and you know joking around. I mean that is fun, uh, but in a learning sense. You can have fun when you're engaged with something. So when people are focused on something and then they're successful, even if they have a little bit of frustration during that process, when they come out at the other end, they said, you know, that was a valuable process. I felt um, that I learned something or that I grew or that I expanded. Uh, all too often, we've dummied down learning so much that it's a list of bullet points that you you skim and scan and you're not really – processing at any deeper level than short-term memory and of course people aren't going to be engaged and they're not going to think that's fun yet they're going to volunteer hours and hours to do something like world of warcraft or angry birds or um candy crush candy crush yeah the big right. one but, but part of the part of the issue with gaming is that it should be challenging otherwise exactly. otherwise it's think, very boring right rick and i and i believe that our learning should be challenged. Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line, instructional designers decided to uh, make it packed with learners that we won't make learning too hard. <clears throat> right. And when we did that, I think we, I think that was a mistake. Well, I think part of the problem is compliance got involved, as well as things that don't necessarily mean you have to learn, but you have to indemnify the company. Right. So you don't want to make it hard because what if they don't get indemnified? They could get sued or, or they'll go back and check LMS records. So that's one of the issues with, I think, that the dumbing down of learning. And it's not to say that all compliance is dumbed down, but it is geared so that people pass it. Otherwise, they, they could be in trouble. And that seems to have gone into every aspect of learning. Um, uh, we've gotten pushback with clients when we've asked a question they haven't learned before. Right. And, and I yeah. say, but... But you know, if we don't ask it, how do you? You don't have a starting point. You don't. You don't know where they are, and give them something that makes them think a little more. No, we well, don't not only to. that, that's the buy-in aspect, so that they'll be compelled to keep keep going. Yeah. You know, if they know it all before they get in there, what's the point? Right. Right. <laughs> it makes me mad. But I know, um, even when I've presented um, courses with branching. And allowing the learner to choose the order that they learned, and boy, that doesn't sell well. So, um, anxious to hear your experiences with that whole thing about gaming and gamification and um, and a compliance and so forth. Right. So, uh, 
and most of my experience with compliance, uh, unfortunately, is the checkbox that Rick talked about. The companies really care that they're legally covered. Yep. Um, you know, if you die and uh, they are covered, they're fine with that, <laughs> um, which is a shame, but that's kind of what happens. Um, and and so I always say, you know, maybe that's not the place that you want to gamify. Maybe that's not the place that you want to have really engaging uh, instruction. If that's the paradigm that we're going to work in, we'll just work in that. But if you want to have a strategic advantage, like strategic selling, um, creativity, innovation, uh, you want people to be able to deal with problems, then games and gamification are a really good way to look at that. Because games, uh, if they're well-designed, uh, force you into some critical thinking. They force you into um, what-if thinking. They force you into thinking three steps ahead. And most people in their busy, uh, productive environments don't have time to you know, lift their head up and think about, well, what's going to happen tomorrow or what's going to happen here? So games can give you a pause to think through some of the more strategic or creative elements. And then to go back to what Don was saying, Games can also give the opportunity, you know, nobody wants to take a course twice, but if they lose a life and start back at the beginning, mm -hmm. um, they're okay with that because they understand the parameters of the game. So games, when well, gamification, when well designed, can help with um, repeating instruction and can help with things like um, taking a little bit of learning over time. We know that's a fantastic way to learn. But it's not a way that we often deliver instruction. We know that games um, through fantasy, for example, fantasy helps uh, let people's guards down so that they're more open to learning and more open to understanding um, ways to approach elements and situations. So fantasy can, can work um, as well as story. We know from a lot of research coming out that uh, in fact, I saw a research study the other day that said when you read a story about somebody walking across the room, the same neuro networks in your mind that you would use when you're actually walking across the room are activated. I mean, a wonderful study. So um, we can help with story. Yeah, it was very interesting. So, so stories, which are part of games, can help us, and that goes back to Bandora's social learning theory, where we learn by observing others. Well, this is even you know, a little more abstract than that. We learn by reading about the experiences of others. I mean, Harvard didn't do Harvard case studies for decades because they were ineffective, right? Um, right. They did them because they worked. <laughs> so, you know, that's a good, good place. I say to people, if you don't want to do a full-fledged game, just start with more story-based instruction as the jumping off point. You know, I remember back, this is almost 18, 19 years ago, there was a company, Internal External Communications, out of, I think, Marina del Rey area in Los Angeles. And they had, uh, they had been contracted by Lexus to do the Lexus Labs training. And you started at the bottom in this underground big laboratory. And you mentioned strategic selling, which, which prompted this for me. Um, and they had to sell their way up until they got out of the underground labs into the, I guess, free world or whatever it was. <laughs> but, <laughs> out of the basement? Yeah, it was kind of in the basement. They had to, I forgot how many levels, maybe five or ten levels to get up and become a master salesman. But the thing is, it was it was clever. It was beautiful graphics. This is laser disc. No, actually, they weren't laser disc. They had, I think, a six or seven, either CD or DVD changer back in those days. Uh, and that's how they delivered the course. But what was clever about it is not only did they work their way up and they could get demoted back down if they didn't sell correctly, but they had a ton of video and they had a ton of branching scenarios based on what their responses were to clients or to prospective clients, um, how, how to work their way out of that. And Lexus had one of the best trained sales forces of anybody back in those days. They probably still do. I'm sure they use probably a newer version of it. But it was very clever, and that was – back then, they didn't call it gamification or anything. They just called it scenario-based training. And, but it really learning. was. It really was a game because they had to earn points. They had to earn sales, work their way up, communicate with other people. They even went so far as having videos of all of their competitors. So oh, they wow, could nice. go and look at the videos of current cars so that they knew how it competed against their own cars. 
and and the, and I talked to salespeople I knew because I had a Lexus in those days, and they said the the salespeople loved it because they said, well, one, it's fun, and two, um, and that goes to the fun you were talking about. They weren't giggling and laughing; they were really engaged. They thought it was fun, and they said when they got out on the floor for real, they knew what to do. Because they'd was, actually right, done it the was so simulations, they have practiced mm-hmm. with it. Yeah, very clever. Yeah. I mean, it's what the military does, right? I mean, yeah. they put and, – and, and sports, right? I always think it's funny. Well, why do you, you know, practice running a marathon on, on, a, on a snowy day or on a rainy day or on a hot day mm-hmm. or on whatever? You practice running a marathon in lots of different environments because you never know what the actual environment would be. Sure. Well, to me, training should be the same way. Practice, you know, what you need to do in lots of different situations so that when you get the situation – you, you know, you're, you're good to go. But we tend to, in training, a lot of times we think, well, once we train you one time, you know everything you'll ever need right. to know. Good luck and God bless. And So, and so Carl, what, what makes problematic. training so damn boring today or e-learning uh, on the whole? It is boring. I, we've right. been through, you know, I, I keep saying some of our clients, we've written some of the worst work we've ever done. They like it. That's what they want. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, we do something nice. They go, no, no, tone it down. Like, say right. thanks for the check. Yeah. So what <laughs> what is it that's causing that that whole level of boredom and and really lack of learning? Right. I I think it's 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 several forces. So one force is uh, the tools are so easy to use, and everybody says, mm-hmm. oh, all you need to do is take the PowerPoint and boom, you can convert it. And people don't realize that there's design behind that. So lots of people who have uh, uh, no experience developing e-learning, develop it with lots of bullet points and lots of stuff and not the engagement of, of the, we, like what I say is we've taken the best of classroom instruction and gotten rid of it. <laughs> and we, we've put well, the rest of I don't know about you. Have you online. sat in meetings where you have to decide whether the button should be called back or previous? Oh yeah. I have been in those meetings. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh. well, well, we te- we want to treat our we, we and the other thing we do is we kind of treat our learner we allow the learners to paint themselves as idiots, right? Because they say, well, if the button's not on the bottom right hand corner, they'll never know to go forward. So we always have to have a bo- button on the bottom right hand corner. Well, if you play World of Warcraft, for example. You could have your um, charts of your inventory and your life and everything anywhere on the screen you want to have. They're not the same every time you log in. And you know what? People somehow deal with that. Um, so, so we've allowed uh, uh, an image of the learners as not intelligent to be there. The second is the learners have a view that training is not important. It's something that must be endured, must be gotten through must be uh, completed, um, and then we'll get to the real job. So somewhere we lost the fact that, that l- learning is really part of our job. The only competitive advantage, I think Senge or somebody said, is learning faster than our competitors. Um, and we allow things like, you know, I've been in companies where, you know, oh, well, the people come to me and they just say, uh, just give me the information. I don't need a training course. I'll just learn it, Right. Well, I say give them that information, but hold them accountable. Yeah, here's the PDF. Come back and take this test and see if you know it. And you know what? It's not a paper pencil test. It's a performance test. Right. It's um, real simulation, real real life stuff. Exactly. And and instead of instead of uh, the other thing is we've taken the paradigm. I think Rick, what we talked about earlier of a classroom where you learn about the theory but you never apply it. Well, in the corporate environment, training seems to be the theory and not the application. Mm-hmm. The military's done simulation. Anytime it's life and death, medical, military, they do simulations. So why don't we do simulations for sales? Why don't we do simulations for compliance? Why don't we do simulations for any other type of learning? We just tell people stuff. We should right. actually have them try to do it. And that in itself is engaging. I can answer, having been my entire career at corporate, I know why we don't, budget and equipment. So, you know, I had great hopes for Second Life in some of those um, those environments for building immersive learning, just exactly what you're talking about, and you can't, you can't use it. 
it's so sad. Well, you know, yeah. what they should really do is is actually budget out about a thousand funnels or more, depending on how many students you have, give everybody the funnel, and then just <laughs> have them sit in front of the computer with the funnel in their mouth, and they're done. They're trained. It would work. <laughs> I, th I think magic wands would be better. That would be good too. That would yeah. be good. Yeah. And sprinkle dust, right? You know, magic yeah, dust. I'm, I'm, I'm partial to the matrix, so just plug me in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but any one of those solutions would work. <laughs> well, we've got That's about kind two, of what we, we expect now anyway. <laughs> now, we've got about two minutes left, Dawn. Do you want to wrap up with anything in particular? And, and Carl, we'd love to have you back on. I'd love to yeah. be back. Boy, that went quickly. It does. 40 minutes went like that. Uh, it sure did. I've been trying to monitor the chat. I know you can see it, too. I don't think we have any outstanding questions there, just that um, we're glad that everybody's here today in the chat room. Come back next week, too, um, because it's a lot more interesting, and, and your questions are great. Um, I, I want to say again, sorry about the video quality, everybody. Um, Rick, you'll see it when you look at the stream later. Uh, we were choppy the entire time, but I want to thank Carl, and please come back before too long. Oh, I will, absolutely. And thanks for having me. It was, it was a great experience and a great time. And uh, have a great and productive New Year, everybody. And, and before we let you go, are there any places sure. you're going to be talking or any oh, presentations yeah. so, you're making? So um, next week I'm going to be at 2K, A-S-T, A-T-D, sorry, A-T-D, 2K. Um, 25 years of my life, it's going to take me a while to learn to it's say gonna that It's going to take a while. Properly. And then I'm actually putting together an uh, I did a lynda.com course on gamification oh, great. and I'm putting together another lynda.com course so I'm actually going to be in California the week after Rick doing some filming which is always well, fun Well actually you know Linda's not far from us drop by and say hi Oh I should yeah absolutely I I, I will I'll be there um, not next week but the week after um, and then I'm going to be at learning solutions and mm -hmm. I'm going to be at training uh, 2015 <laughs> so I'm doing the whole circuit this year uh, someday I, every year I vow, okay, this year I'm going to less conferences, but I don't seem to be able to pull that off, but, but I'm working on it. Well, and we're doing a workshop at, at uh, Learning Solutions on Play to Learn with Sharon Bowler. So if anybody's interested, we do rapid uh, prototyping of games, which is a lot of fun. Well, that's great. So oh, I'll see you at Learning Solutions. And, okay, great. Uh, but if you are here, um, I'll send you, I think I have your email. I'll send you um, our address and everything. And we're, we're on our way to Linda, on, on your way to Linda. We're not far from there, or okay. I think we're about half hour away from them. Oh, great. Yeah, I would love to stop by. They're closer to Santa Barbara, and we're in Camarillo, which is on the way. Okay, excellent. That'd be fun. It would be fun. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. Well, I'll have to figure out where I'm going to see Carl Cop next. But maybe yeah. on eLearn Chat before too long. eLearn Chat would be great. Yeah. And uh, you're in Chicago? I'm uh, north of Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, okay. I was just in, I was, I was in Wisconsin for an ATD event a while back. In Milwaukee. How, Milwaukee, that's Milwaukee? right. Yeah. I just read that yesterday. I thought, rats, I probably, no, nah, I think I was traveling then. But, um, but yeah, do, do let me know when you're in the area. I will. Great. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. We had a great time. So we could sing Blister in the Sun, but we won't <laughs> <laughs> to end this today. <laughs> Probably a wise decision. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm thinking of it as I'm looking outside in this cold, blustery wind that has wind chills yes. below 30 below today. <laughs> I think Blister in the Sun yeah. sounds better. <laughs> it does. <laughs> well, anyway, Carl, again, appreciate you coming out. And Dawn, Thanks as always, we'll see you next week. And for everyone in the chat room, thanks for being there. And if you're watching the recordings on Vimeo, please subscribe and give us your feedback. We always like hearing from you. And There's two subscribe buttons here, and you can't hardly miss it. Yeah, and these are the ones on Ustream. There's one on top and one on the bottom. So, yep. so definitely click one of those. If you right don't, orange. something bad might happen. So definitely <laughs> click on it. Um, have a good one, everyone. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.